Coming up, Leo's got the brand new Samsung Galaxy S6. Miriam's got the Lumia 735. OMG Chad's got an OMG bot. And I'm taking a look at a sensible mid-range $6,000 PC. You got to watch before you buy. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Before You Buy is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of Before You Buy is brought to you by iFixit. You can fix it, and iFixit makes it easy with free step by step repair guides, high quality replacement parts, and all the tools that you'll ever need. For $10 off your purchase of $50 or more, go to iFixit.com slash twit and enter the code before you buy at checkout. Welcome to Before You Buy, it's Twit's product review show where we take the latest in gadgets and gizmos that we get here at the Twit Brick House and we give it to our hosts, to our guests, to the people who can give you the most honest review of technology that you can possibly get. And I am proud to welcome the first reviewer. Yay. You know him, you love Yay. him. Yay. It's Leo Laporte. I came in on my day off to review this. I I'm know. So what are you doing it. here? You should be soaking in a tub or walking <laughs> through the fields. <laughs> I could bring this in the tub. Um, it's not waterproof, though, let me tell you. Speaking of this, there's been a lot of buzz on this device, yeah. and I've been watching your albums. It, it, it's nothing sort of spectacular. This is the Samsung Galaxy S6. Came out today as we record this, although I don't know why, but I was able to pre order on T Mobile's site a week ago and got it a few. Days. Actually, I got it, uh, I think, Monday of this week, so I've had it for five days. I love this phone. I brought the uh, uh, iPhone 6 along to, you, to give you some idea of size comparison. It's very similar. It's almost it's 7 millimeters, almost exactly the same thickness. Screen's bigger, but, it, but at least to give you an idea of what it's going to feel like to hold this thing, this is, uh, this is a very slim, light and I think beautiful phone. I'm not, yeah, it's mad at me because I've been used using up the it. I used up the battery. <laughs> it is a fingerprint magnet. Like the older iPhones, it has a glass back. This is a Gorilla Glass 4. And there are two, as you know, Galaxy S6s. This is the edge where they've actually bent the glass, the screen, around the edge slightly. And that gives it, I don't know. I mean, some people might not like this, but I just feel like this is the most elegant and beautiful phone I've ever beheld. You know, when I heard about that edge, I thought that's a gimmick. Who cares if the glass is bent around the edges? But it makes it look like a futuristic phone. Yeah. It, it looks good. You can probably feel it's getting a little warm. That's one of the... Uh, what you're going to see in here is a phone where there's no compromise in terms of the processor, the screen. This is an amazing 2560 by 1400 screen that's giving you 577 dots per inch. I can't think of any screen I've ever seen on any phone with that kind of resolution. That means it is more than retina. I mean, you could you could use a magnifying glass. You probably couldn't see pixels on this. And as always with Samsung screens, the color reproduction is very, very nice. You know, we should, we should this poor little iPhone's going to oh, get unhappy if we leave him there. <laughs> He's just going to start to feel bad. Uh, they've done a, uh, you know, they have four or five different settings, actually more like three different settings. You can have adaptive. This is the photo setting for it, and I like that. It seems to be the most accurate uh, color space. Of course, it's got TouchWiz on it, but it is a uh, lollipop, 5.0.2. First thing I did when I uh, plugged it in, they gave uh, they sent an update out, and I have a feeling there'll be some more updates because there's a few things on this that are a little... Uh, odd, but but let me give you a tour of some of the great features. First of all, it does have a fingerprint reader, as the Note 4 and the S5 did. But remember, Samsung was really uh, disappointed with the results in the F5, S5. It just it wasn't different enough from previous generations, and it had that industrial feel, as does the Note right, 4, where right. they compromised uh, design and and function, design for function. And I love the Note 4; it's what I've been carrying. But this is a no compromise design. I mean, it is just. Gorgeous. In every respect, you kind of, you don't want to put this in a case. No, I don't know. I haven't dropped it yet. I don't know how resilient it is, but uh, it is just gorgeous. So the, they've had a fingerprint reader, but it's always required a swipe. It's that old school fingerprint right, reader. Right. This is an iPhone finger style fingerprint reader. Unfortunately, I've uh, set it up so it recognizes I'm at work and it, it keeps it unlocked. So I don't know if I can show you 
the uh, let me see if I can do this one more time. Now, see, it's unlocked. No, no. But all you have to do is touch it, just like you do on the iPhone. It works almost, not quite, but almost as well as the iPhones. Instantaneously reading without any movement. You don't press the button, and, and it seems pretty accurate. And, of course, uh, banks, financial institutions, LastPass uses it. So that's good. You feel much more secure with this phone. There's a backup password you can enter if your uh, fingerprint doesn't work. But the thing most people are going to talk about is the camera. Now, notice there is a little camera bump. When a phone is 7 millimeters, you can't get a camera in there without giving it a little bit more room. They have here 16 megapixels, very fast F19. Oh, wow. That is, that is as fast as the fast. There's nothing faster so on you can, the market. So you can finally get indoor pictures with an Android phone. Yeah. Wow. Okay, yeah. nice. Uh, and, in fact, why don't we show some of those pictures? Oh, my phone's ringing. <laughs> it is Mission Impossible. <laughs> How do you like that? <laughs> Take down notice. Great speakers. And, you know, one of the things I really like about this uh, phone, uh, and Sa Samsung's done this before, they have an adaptive audio capability. So when you plug in your headphones, you actually do a, sound, a listening test, a hearing test, and then it adapt, it gets, makes a fre it makes an equalizer frequency response oh. according to your hearing. And I, I'm... I love this. I didn't. I couldn't find it in the Note 4. It was in the S5 and the S4. They put. They brought it back. And that actually is a great big selling point. Up for especially as you get older and your hearing deteriorates. I can't hear the high frequencies as well. So they equalize them up. And this music sounds on headphones sounds great on this. But let's show you some pictures because that's where this camera phone sings. I am willing to say it right now. This is the best. The it's best. better than the Lumia 1020. Bar none. Really? This is low light. Now they're saying low light is good. Yes, it is. This is low light because this is in my wine closet. With, with like one bulb, keep going through these here. Um, you got a little slideshow going. Uh, this, by the way, is using the adaptive focus. So you, it's kind of funky. You can, you can uh, change the focus. But this is with no lights at all, if you watch the next picture. That's no lights at all. It's dark in there. Looks fantastic. You, you'll see a little graininess, a little, but it looks fantastic. Now, given enough light, as we did yesterday when we went, on, Lisa and I went on a walk in the park, I'm getting pictures. That's a pano. And you can see there's a little flaw in the bottom there. There it is where it's cropped out. Every bit as good as my digital SLR, it feels like. I mean, these are amazing. The color rep reproduction, the, the crispness, it's incredible. Uh, this is easily the camera phone for you if you want to take photos. Now, one of the things that I've noticed about a lot of Samsung's previous phones is they just overkill with modes on the camera. Did, did they do that on they the They do, and let me show you what the modes look like, though, because I think they've done it in a, in a, in a nice way. So I'm going to go back to the home screen here and launch. This is the Samsung camera. Of course, they're third-party cameras you could put on here. Uh, the modes are here, and you see they've made it oh, yeah, much less offensive. Yeah. You know, it used to be a... And you can, take, you can take more, you can download more, you can take them out. The basic modes are auto. Pro is an all-manual mode. I really appreciate that, where you can adjust everything. You can change the ISO, the white balance. You can change the exposure, the focus. It's really nice to have all of those modes there. It has a great pano mode. I, you've seen some of the pano pictures. Mm -hmm. They really come out great. A slow motion and fast motion, much like the iPhone, you can select which part of the uh, video is slow or fast. It's got a nice little video editor built in. The virtual shot is a 360 pano. Uh, animated GIF, that's one I downloaded. <laughs> kind of fun. You take a, it, if you do a burst mode, it'll turn it into an auto awesome, much like Google does. I don't, you don't really need that. But you see, it's very unobtrusive. I feel like they, they are not really overwhelming you with the modes. Uh, let's, actually, let's go back to auto mode because I don't want to overwhelm the screen. Uh, you do have an auto HDR, which I've used almost ex all the time because it just seems to do a good job. And because this is such a fast camera, the auto HDR is very fast. You don't feel like you're taking multiple pictures. It's just the same as without it. Now, that's, that's what's interesting about this particular uh, phone is they've got an 8-core Samsung Exynos processor in here. But what it really is is two quad-core processors. Okay, so they bonded them together. There's a Cortex-A53 running at 1.5 gigahertz, and there's a quad-core 2.1 gigahertz Cortex-A57. And that's where you see some interesting results, because when the camera turns on or when you're doing a lot of processing, all of a sudden that that bigger processor will kick in and you can almost see the nice. battery go. Oh. So okay. it gets, and feel it, it gets a little bit warm in the back. Uh, you do, you kind of, this is a phone where it's hard to say what the battery life is because it depends a lot on how you use it. The battery life, though, is disappointing. 10 to 12 hours in my, my usage. Uh, when I went out to take pictures, these pictures, in fact, let's show some more of these because I think they're so good. When I went out to take these pictures 
Um, uh, we went for an hour walk. And this I is lost... all auto HDR, right? Uh, no, some of it's not. That's not. Really? That's just regular. Oh. When we went out, uh, I lost about 30% of the battery in an hour because I'm taking a lot of pictures. So I find that a little bit uh, disappointing. So you're, you you're, always, you you're always waking up that second CPU just to, just well, to handle that there are th Right, for some things. Not for making a phone call, not for texting, not for a lot of the things one does with a phone. But unfortunately, the thing you're going to want to do with this phone, which is spend a lot of time on the screen reading stuff and a lot of time taking pictures. Let me show you. This is a really weird one. This is... Uh, <laughs> Okay, this is a little strange. It allows you, I rotated the phone around Lisa, and it allows you to make a no. kind of three-dimensional, I should do this to you, Padre. Oh, that's going to take a lot of processing power. Well, just, I started playing this back, and it killed the battery. So, yes, exactly. But you got it. The processing power is there if you want it. You're just going to have to be aware. It's gonna be, you're going to be carrying battery a battery yeah, pack because yeah. this doesn't, unlike previous Samsung phones, does not have a removable battery, does not have an SD card. In fact, you're going to want to get enough memory. They sell it in the three variants. There's 32, 64, and 128 gigs. I got the 64. I know from past experience. Right. That's plenty for me. And the truth is, with 128 gigs, if you get that much, you don't miss the SD card. It's actually better probably to have it all inside the, uh, the thing. So let me give you the pros and cons. Easily, best screen you've ever seen. I think the most beautiful, and this is a matter of taste, but I think the most beautiful uh, phone I've ever used. It just f it feels good in the hand. It's it, it just, you f if you pull it out of your pocket, you go, ah. And of course, with that great screen, you are looking at something that seems like it should be very expensive. And it's not. It's about the price. Uh, I paid, I think, uh, $759. You pay 100 bucks more for the curved edge on the side. Performance is very good. I like that adaptive sound. Fingerprint reader works for the first time. It's as good as Apple's or very close to as good as Apple's. It also has wireless charging, and this is smart. Not only Qi charging, which is kind of one standard, but the power mat standard, both built in. Now, you're going to want to use adaptive charging. It has that fast charging capability most of the time. And that's the one thing that compensates for bad battery life. You can get about half of the charge back in half an hour if you oh, use the, the fast okay. charger, which comes with it. Also comes with a pretty good pair of headphones. Uh, on the con side... Uh, as I mentioned, the battery life is weak, 10 to 12 hours. There's no SD card, no replacement battery. I'm going to miss that. Uh, I have noticed some software glitches, but I, those will be fixed, I'm sure, with another update. Uh, this has just come out, and usually that's that's the case. One of the things I notice is sometimes the home key is unresponsive. For such a snappy phone, you don't expect unresponsiveness. The other thing is it's very easy to actually use the edge screen by accident and, and, and launch I, I applications. I was wondering about that because I have fat hands. I'm, I'm always going to be touching the edges of that screen. It's actually part of the screen. They bend it at a very okay. high temperature. Uh, so the oversensitive screen uh, sometimes can be a little frustrating. You kind of learn to hold it like that. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't even shown what the edge does. It doesn't do much. It's not like the Note 4 where the edge is a very uh, fancy thing. If you do this just right, as you can see, you see it's showing oh, okay. some stuff. Okay. Uh, you can get the date, the weather, the it's upside down again. Although I can get it to turn around, I don't know how it. I, it's, you know, there's some confusing stuff in here. They'll get that sorted within they a will. month or so. You can see I'm also getting sports scores. I'm getting stocks. Uh, so there's some tweets. I can get news updates as well. Um, and there's a really weird thing. You can have five people to have that have colors. So let me pull this in. These are my five favorites. Each of them has a unique color. Whoops. Do that again so you can see it. You see how it's kind of fun, finicky. Here. Each of them has a unique color. So the phone will glow with that color when I've got a notification oh. or a call from them as when I have it face down. It also has a night clock, which I've turned off because it's supposed to just illuminate the edge, but the whole screen is faintly lit, which means I have another light in the room, which is not acceptable to me and others. But uh, it's a mild, it's like a little night light. And then you have a side clock. So that's the pros and cons. Price, as I said, I paid eight, I said pay eight hundred fifty nine dollars. It's three hundred dollars subsidized. A little steep. A little steep. Um, well, because you're paying for the curved edge, right. it's a hundred bucks more. I don't know if you need that. A number of reviewers said just get the uncurved edge. You'll save hundred bucks. But I think I it's pretty. It's pretty. It's really pretty. I, so you have to decide if a hundred bucks. You can't see it, but yeah, it's pretty. <laughs> I would actually get the edge. I would say there is no question in my mind. Uh, that this is the best Android phone on the market today, and I've and I've looked at them all. It's probably going to be the phone of 2015, wow. and I think it, it, it. Even if you're an iPhone user, you're going to want to take a look at this. It, it gives it a strong run for the money. The best camera ever, even better, even better than the iPhone 6. So, a definite buy in the Samsung Galaxy S6 Edge. Thank you very much. That's Leo Laporte you, with a buy.
for the Samsung Galaxy S6. If you are looking for a new phone, if you're in the market for the, the latest, the greatest, the one with the best camera, the one with a beautiful screen, that just may be the choice for you. Again, Leo Laporte, you can find him, well, everywhere. I mean, just turn on Twit. He's going to be there. <laughs> How many shows do you do now? You, you're, I only you're do down, 10 shows. Yeah. What are you talking about? You're, you're down to like 20 hours a week, I think. <laughs> yeah. So you're, you're kind of slacking now. Not a bad thing. <laughs> we got a new one coming, so yeah. maybe, maybe well, I'll be back wait, to work. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait, wait. That's Xne on the une. Before we reveal any more secrets of the Twit Brick House, let's go ahead and jump into our next review. We asked Miriam Joar to take a look at the Nokia 735. Here's what she said about their new hotness. Hey, it's Miriam with Before You Buy, and this here is the Nokia still, Lumia 735. Yes, this is one of the last phones released with the Nokia brand, and it is a really delightful little mid-range phone. So this Lumia 735 is really designed to be Nokia's or Microsoft device's selfie phone, and it has a good back camera and a good front camera because of it. But it's interesting that even though both phones are mid-range and about the same price, they both do some things better than the other. And you're kind of compromising either way. Um, I would probably pick the 830 myself, but let me tell you how the 735 is better than the 830. And if you look at them side by side, the display is actually significantly better on the 735 than it is on the 830. The 830 here um, is a five inch IPS panel, but its blacks are very faded. They're very gray. You can't really see it here, but it's a bit more noticeable when I go in the menu, for example. Now the 735 is a 4.7 inch display, but it is, as I said, a much higher quality, better viewing angle, better all around. They're both 720p. Um, both have similar guts. So let's go through these guts real quick. Um, there's a Snapdragon 400 on board, uh, quad core. There is one gig of RAM, which is a pretty standard spec for a mid-range uh, Lumia device. This has eight gigs of built-in storage to micro SD. So you really are going to need a micro SD card for this phone. Uh, you're gonna run out of space really fast. Whereas the 830 has 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, sorry, of storage. There's no capacitive buttons on this phone, whereas the 830 does. So it basically relies on the software on-screen buttons. And that's a change that's come to some of the uh, new Microsoft devices and, and Windows Phone phones. Uh, also lacking is a cam dedicated camera button. So that's one drawback compared to the 830, is you don't have a double to 10 camera button. You have to launch the camera by going here at the top, and tapping on the camera icon, or you can uh, put a tile on your here it is. You can put a tile on your uh, on your desktop on your uh, here. That's just the camera, but that's a minor thing, right? It, it, again, it's a bit disappointing because this is a selfie phone. You'd think that you know you want to take a selfie. You're gonna have a camera, a dedicated camera key would have been a nice thing, uh, but I guess they put all the money on the display, so you you lose some some things on uh, like the amount of storage and the camera button, but. Spec-wise, there's nothing to complain about. This phone you can buy, uh, this is a European model, so you can buy it um, online right now in the US for about $300. Um, it does have LTE, but the bands are not compatible with the US. So right now I'm on AT&T, but it's HSPA Plus only. So just bear that in mind, you're not gonna get LTE. There's a 730 that's dual SIM, potentially with 3G, and then there's a 735 that's LTE compatible. So this is a 735 with LTE. They're both exactly the same in every other way. Um, again, comparing these two is, is important. They both have wireless charging, Qi wireless charging, which is great. Uh, you don't see too many mid-range phones with that. Uh, and then the other things to keep in mind that are a little different is that uh, this is a metal phone, so if you drop this phone, well, you're going to scuff it up. I mean, it's very, it's, you know, it's very robust, but you're going to scuff it up. This phone is all plastic. If you drop it, it's very easy. You can take the back cover off, and it, it's basically the entire phone is the back cover. So you just take it off like this. Let me just show you right here. And you just replace this entire back cover uh, that wraps all the way around the phone and you now have a brand new phone. So, uh, you know, that covers probably 20 bucks uh, or so. It comes in different colors too. So if you want to change from uh, an orange shell to a, say, uh, you know, uh, black or white, I think there's also a, this, this shade of green if you want it. So that's, that's what's cool about the 735. Let's talk about the cameras. It is a selfie phone after all. 
So there's two cameras. There's a 6.7 megapixel in the back. You're gonna say, huh? What? Well, that's kind of weird. Who does a camera with such low pixels these days? Well, I'll get to that. And then there is a five megapixel front facing camera. And of course, a selfie phone. It's gonna have a nice camera in the front and it does deliver. Wide angle, no autofocus, but a nice five megapixel. But really the little gem here is the rear camera. It's surprising. As you know, the A30 has a big honking 10 megapixel OIS camera, you know, that's what it's for. It's a camera phone that's trying to be almost as good as a 930 and it delivers. But with an f 2.2 lens, you know, it, it, it does lose a little bit in terms of light gathering ability, which is compensated for with the OIS, the optical image stabilization. This has no optical image, image stabilization, of course, but it's got an f over 1.9 a lens. What that means, you know, if you don't know not a photo buff, is that this thing gathers more light, like you can shoot in the dark with it. This is a shot taken pretty much at night on the side of the street, and it's perfect. Like you can zoom in, and, and there's, again, there's no optical image stabilization. And this is what an f over 1.9 lens does for you. So, you know, that's it in a nutshell. You're running Windows Phone 8.1. No, no surprises here. Uh, it's snappy enough. Snapdragon 400 runs Windows Phone beautifully. There's absolutely no doubt. You get all the great Lumia apps. You know, you get all the Microsoft apps like OneDrive, Outlook, all, you know, Office, of course. So this, this is really a good phone in terms of, you know, if you are working for a company, for example, that has all of their uh, business on Microsoft systems. Um, and, uh, yeah. I mean, really, um, I, I, I like this phone a lot. It's For me, it's always a toss between these two because they both have advantages and drawbacks and they're both mid-range and about the same price. And of course, uh, in terms of the US, you can get this one, the 830 on AT&T subsidized. So this might cost you a little more, but if you're looking for a very versatile, beautiful Windows phone, this is it. So summary, let's talk about what's great and what's not so great, the display. This phone, well, first of all, it's a great mid-range phone, so that's one plus. Secondly, uh, the display. Uh, third, the rear camera. Um, it doesn't really need OIS, is really the takeaway. It's f over 1.9, can gather so much light that in most cases you'll be a happy camper. Now, uh, front camera is pretty decent. I'm not a huge fan of, you know, the whole concept of a selfie phone, but if you take a lot of selfies, this is absolutely a good, a worthy choice. So those are the kind of the top things. Uh, what's bad about it? As I said, no dedicated camera button for a selfie phone that's a bit odd. Storage, eight gigabytes is a little low. Even though there's micro SD support, you really have to buy a card, whereas with 16 gigs on this guy, you can go with it for a bit before you have to upgrade. Um, and that's really it. I would say, uh, the, you know, this is a buy. Uh, absolutely, get this phone. Uh, just keep in mind that it's probably a better buy in Europe and Asia, where the LTE bands work on this phone, and since it's not really available in the US as a subsidized device. So I'm Miriam with Before You Buy, and this was our review of the Lumia 735. The Nokia 735 gets a buy from Miriam Joar. Thank you very much for that review. You can find Miriam all over the Twit TV network. You're going to find her here for Before You Buy, but you'll also see her on All About Android on Tuesdays nights. Just make sure you follow her on Twitter at Tank Girl. That's Tank Girl with all of the vowels missing. Now let's move on to uh, another product. We're going to be talking a little bit about Chad's new robot, but before we do that, let's take a moment to thank the sponsor for this episode of Before You Buy. Now, if you're like me, you're a geek and you like to take things apart. You like to fix things. I mean, it's, it's part of what being a geek is, right? You don't just buy things, you make things, you create things, you repair things. Well, there is no better way to make and repair and create things than with iFixit. Now, iFixit is the one-stop shop on the internet to go for you, not just your tools, but your repair guides. Do you want to fix your red ring of death on your Xbox? Or, or maybe you need to work on some of your computer tools, or perhaps, you're getting into quadcopters because you're watching me on know-how. Well, if any of those things are true, you need iFixit in your life. Now, iFixit's gonna start with this fantastic ProTech Toolkit. This is 70 tools to assist you with any mod, malfunction, or misfortune that may come your way. Now, the toolkit is the gold standard for electronics work, from garage hackers to the CIA and FBI, but more importantly, their unique tools are used by repair technicians 
everywhere. Now, this is a 54-bit driver kit, this, this nice little plastic piece here. This gives you pretty much everything. If you've ever needed to open something and you can't find the right bit, well, it's probably in here because it's got Phillips bits, Pentalo bits, Torx and Torx security bits, tri-wing bits, triangle bits, even those things that you find at McDonald's. They've got this, this, that's the flexible extension that lets you get into those tight corners where you can't get a regular screwdriver. Of course, you get ESD safe precision tweezers, you get an anti-static wrist wrap, you get nylon spudgers, metal spudgers, so that you can open up cases without marking them. You know, like when you use a flat screwdriver or a knife. It's lightweight, it's compact, it's got a durable tool roll, and it's great for people who, well, deal with computers, even our very own uh, Alex Gumpel there. It's only $64.95 and it's backed by a lifetime warranty. Now, hobbyists and home DIY fixers alike use the Protect Toolkit for doorknobs, eyeglasses, cabinet doors, sink fixtures, and more. If you're looking for a great addition to an artist or hobbyist tool chest, really, you need to look no further. Best of all, there are thousands of free iFixit guides to help you put your tools to use, even repair parts. So if you want to replace the battery on your iPhone or fix your sc shattered screen, you'll find not just the tools and the parts to do it, but step-by-step -step repair guides. It's, it's really what iFixit stands for. So here's what we want you to do. We want you to fix it and have iFixit help you with it. With iFixit, you can fix it yourself. Visit iFixit.com twit for more than 10,000 free step-by-step -step guides iFixit also sells every part and tool that you'll ever need. Just enter the code before you buy at checkout and you'll save $10 off of any purchase of $50 or more. That's before you buy. iFixit.com slash twit. iFixit.com slash twit and use the code before you buy to save $10. And we thank iFixit for their support of before you buy. Let's go ahead and change it up a little bit. We've, very, we've been very phone-centric for this episode, so we thought that maybe it's time to introduce the rise of the machines. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I bring you OMG Chad. That's right. Coming, Robots! Coming straight from his cyber existence, this is Chad Johnson on a, a, the... This is called the Kubi? The Kubi. This is the Kubi. This is a, a telepresence robot, basically. And the idea is that I have an interface over on my side that I can change this camera all around to see you. Hey, I, I, how's it going? I'm getting a little freaked out right now. Is that okay? Really? Just <laughs> slightly freaked out. So this, the, the QB has a range of 300 degrees of axis. So if I want to move it all the way around, here we go. Whee! Here we go. You can see the mic that we've used. To, to mic up the, the, the QB. And then it'll go all the way to the other side. Hi. <laughs> okay, there I go. I want uh, my mom. <laughs> yeah, this is all the way down. This is all the way up. And this is holding an iPad 3, I believe, which is one of the heaviest iPads they've ever made. So it can handle basically any, any type of tablet. Now, what did they make this for? So, I mean, obviously, it's a telepresence device. Right. And uh, it's for people who, who want to have some sort of physical presence, even when they're, they're remote. And I can get that, but, I mean, robot on a stick. Is that really something that was a big product market? Well, so this is really nicely marketed at businesses, I think. This is perfect for the conference room, where you need to be in a telepresence, you know, position. But you can actually look around at participants and change your angle. So this is the interface that I have on my end. Uh, it's very simple. If I want to see something, I can click on it, and it will center it on, on that. Ooh, there we go. It's a little bit latency. Uh, it's pretty solid here with the Wi-Fi that we have. And I'm, <laughs> I really love the interface that if I want to click that little ball, it now centers the view basically on that. You also have these little sliders on the side, so you, if you want to go all the way up or all the way down, you can do that without just clicking on the interface. And you can also hide your picture in picture, decide if you mute your audio, video, speakers, or in the call. Um, now, uh, one of the nice features about this, if you are working at a company that has an internal video system, like say Cisco, or maybe even Skype, who's relies on that security of that internal video system this this qb video probably wouldn't work for them 
So, Padre, if you could, in this call, I'll go back to you over at, at the set and uh, start up the other app that I asked you to set up. So, if you didn't notice what just happened, currently I'm on FaceTime now. Oh, okay. So I can, this is this is uh, app independent. I can use pretty right. much any communication feature I want. So this is a third party app. What's funny is FaceTime video is worse than the QB video. Um, but on my side, I now have a different interface to use. Here, let me see if I can make this a little bit better. There we go. So on my side, I have an interface where I can click and the QB turns. And over here, my FaceTime application will do exactly what it wants. So let's say I want there, and it moves. If I click over here, there we go, it moves. So you could use this app independent of the QB Video app, which makes this very expandable. That you could use it with any, any type of video application and type of any ecosystem at your work and people can can use it so this could work with either maybe two uh, remote devices that can only do one app at a time or a computer like i'm using right now okay i could see w why this is fun i mean telepresence is always going to be a, a you know a kind of fun to play with but is it really practical and have you enjoyed using the kubi i have because you can you can invite a friend they can use skype it's not a new program they've used the same program for all their lives and then they get an interface to control where the QB points. It's a ton of fun and it never gets old. So I really like it. Alright, so Chad, give me your pros and your cons. So, pros are that it's platform independent. It does have built-in video and 300 degrees of motion is really amazing. On the cons, it does make quite a lot of sound moving around those <laughs> um, the price is also at $500 which really kind Ooh. of outprices this from a consumer product to really a commercial product um, so I try don't buy for the QB this is the classic they also make a secure edition uh, I'm gonna say try mostly because I feel like the price is a little bit high for the um, quality of the whir, 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 whir. Right, yeah, you know, it, it really sounds more like an enterprise product because at $500, you're not going to get a lot of consumers who would just use this on the off chance that they might break it out once or twice a year. That's Chad Johnson, that OMG Chad, with uh, the Kubi Telepresence robot. And uh, wait, wait, he's got two things. Wait. Two more things. Uh, the battery lasts for four hours when unplugged. Um, and this is a universal mount, so you could put a phone, any type of tablet in this, and they have uh, App Store apps. Yeah. And I believe that this is actually the way we're going to be bringing you into the Twit TV network from now on, right? We're just going to, you're going to be a head in a jar. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to find more of Chad's work, don't forget that you can find him on The Gizwiz. That's right, just jump over and see him and Dick DiBartolo go over some of the craziest tech gadgets and gizmos that you'll find. But also, you'll find him at, uh, oh, he plays this very not really well-known game called Minecraft, and he's, he's kind of a big deal. Chad, can you, uh, can you tell them where they'll find you? Yeah, youtube.com slash omgcraft. Chad Johnson, OMG Chad, OMG Bot, thank you very much. Now, uh, we've uh, got a little bit of a first look for you here. Uh, we've, we've shown you some phones. We've shown you a telepresence robot. Now I thought I might show you a very sensible desktop. Now, many of you know that I am into price performance. In other words, I like to find the, the, the highest price technology and then take it down a notch or two because that's normally going to be the sweet spot where you'll get the most processing power for the least amount of buck. But occasionally, just occasionally, you like to go crazy. And that's what this is all about. This is the main gear. This is a monster of a desktop PC. Now, they've given us our own custom scheme. This is not just a standard paint job, folks. This is actually automotive paint. They've put enamel with a gloss, and it, it is quite beautiful. But it's not just a pretty face. What's inside this box is actually a beast. Let me see if I can tip this thing over. It's actually quite heavy because... Uh, it's liquid cooled. Oh, remember, oh, 
when, uh, when I like to buy my PCs, I do like to get price performance, but in this case, they've just gone all out. This is a, a vertical heat dissipation case. So what they've done is they've actually flipped around the components so that air is drawn in through the back over the hot components and sucked out the top. That's actually super important. You get a quieter case and you get much cooler components, which means you can push them harder and they'll last longer. This is an Asus X99 Deluxe motherboard that comes with USB 3, SATA 6, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, basically all the bells and whistles. This is an Intel Core i7-5960X. It's an 8-core CPU running from 3 to 3.5 gigahertz, but what they've done is, if you look here, Zach, uh, this is actually a liquid cooling system uh, uh, right next to this power supply. They've liquid cooled the CPU and they've overclocked it. Now, this is a factory overclock from May Gear. They guarantee it at 4.5 gigahertz. It absolutely screams. You've also going to notice that it's got, uh, well, a couple of uh, GTX hot and this thing is really big. Uh, going over the other, this is a, a GeForce GTX 980 times two, eight gigabytes in SLI. Uh, you could add one more. They've actually got a configuration of this that's even higher that will put it in a uh, three-way SLI, which is uh, also quite nice. Now it's got 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. It's got a main gear Epic 180 super cooler, so you can keep the processor nice and cool without creating a whole lot of, of heat bloom inside the case. It's got an 860 watt Corsair Platinum power supply, two 256 gigabyte Samsung Evo 250 SSDs in RAID 0. And when RAID 0, those two SSDs will actually give you 750 megabytes per second read. It's blazing fast. They've also included one three terabyte CK Barracuda XT. That's the hybrid drive so that uh, you, you've got speed and you've got a lot of storage. It's also got dual gigabit ethernet, a Blu-ray burner, and uh, one of my personal favorite features, they've got a lifetime warranty. Now it's two years all intensive, but they give you a lifetime of service. Uh, it's not just the hardware though, they've really put a lot of thought. This thing does actually have a window here, and it's got uh, lights that you can control. So if you, if you are one of these people that likes to light up your case, you've got that. They've also got this innovative cable management. I didn't like it at first, but the more I think about it, the more it makes sense. Because they've turned the motherboard up so that all of my components, this is actually the top of the computer, it means that all the cables get routed out through the top and then you can lock them down. It makes it so neat, so clean. You don't have cables dangling off the back of your PC. And I, I gotta tell you, I'm excited to actually do the full review on this because I, I don't think, I actually, I know, I've never had a computer with this much performance before. Uh, from the factory, they say that this will do, what is it, uh, a 3D mark score of 12,105. That's absolutely screaming. But of course, we're gonna verify that. Now, you might be asking yourself, well, what's all that gonna cost? I mean, the CPU alone is gonna cost over $1,000 and the video cards are gonna be running very nearly that per. So uh, it's actually difficult to, to price out a main gear because they didn't give us the price in the review. So I had to go to their website as reviewed, this is about a $6,000 PC, and it's not even the high end. They've got more expensive units that are far more decked out, that have more memory, that have another video card. You can drive the CPU even har harder. You can put a bigger power supply, uh, but we want to see what a mid-range crazy performance machine will do, and that's what Main Gear is going to let us do. Oh, I, I'm going to give you the real deal. I don't want to just spec this thing out and see whether or not it runs and then say, oh yeah, it, it goes, you should go buy one. I'm going to use this as my daily driver. I'm replacing my Predator. I have an Acer Predator that I use as my video workstation back in my studio. I'm going to do all my production. So every video that you see from here on out until I do the full review of this Main Gear box, will be done on this main gear box. So by the time I get to the full review, I should be able to tell you whether or not this is worth its weight in gold. And trust me, that would be way more than $6,000 because this thing is heavy. That's the main gear. This, uh, this thing will be uh, available. Actually, it is available right now. The main gear shift, super stock. Check it out. Just go over to the main gear website and, and see what we're dealing with. And uh, maybe it's your next PC. Now, let's go ahead and move to something that I, I enjoy. Here on Before You Buy, we've started up a new segment that we like to call the parting shot. It's a product that typically doesn't deserve a review all of its own. We get a lot of products that, you know, they're nice, they're interesting, but just can't see us spending a whole lot of time on doing them. We like to hand them out to members of the Twit family and just let them give us some initial impressions. 
And in this case, we've gone to Megan Maroney and we've given her the Fuel Ion wireless charger. I am Megan Maroney, and I host i5 for the iPhone and also Tech News Tonight. And I am here to review the Fuel Ion charging system for the iPhone 6. It's from a company called Patriot. And I thought it was okay. It charges through magnets, which is interesting. It's a whole system. All of these parts are sold separately. You can buy the case, you buy the case with either the stand or the pad but you buy the battery separately. So like most charging systems, you're not gonna get completely free of the wires. They're still gonna hook up to the stand or to the pad. But the first, it starts with the case and you slip your phone into it. I did not, this was the thing that first was off-putting to me because it was not that easy to get this in and out. Uh, there was this little connector here bent, which was not so much fun, but now I got, it, it kind of loosened up a little bit as I used it and then you just snap it in and that's the super strong magnets there. And then you plug this into a USB port and then you just snap it on, which is great. It works in portrait and landscape as we call it in the business. And you can probably hear that it's charging. Then you know it's charging. A few times when I did it, it said that the system was not supported and that was a little scary. I was afraid I was going to crash my iPhone, but it didn't. Uh, the other parts are this battery that you charge the same way you charge the phone, you charge the battery on the stand or on the pad. You can actually do both. You can charge the battery while you're charging the phone or just do one by one. And then here's where the mobile charging comes. If you need a little bit of extra juice, you bring this with you, stick it in your pocket or your purse and snap it on if you need to some extra charging. I think the price is why I would not necessarily call it a buy. Um, the prices for the, the charging stand costs about $40. Uh, the case costs about $50. The charging pad costs around $36. Um, and there's a charging stand that attaches to your windshield uh, so you can use it while you're driving. I didn't test that, but that costs about $36 also. And if you have an older version of the iPhone, I noticed that those are cheaper for all of the parts, but it does come for the iPhone 5 and those parts will be a little bit cheaper. The other thing it does, it doesn't use your traditional iPhone connector. It uses this other type of connector. Um, so your connector that comes with your iPhone is basically uh, just no longer useful. And if you have that, you can't use it on there and to use with the charging system. So that's about it. Uh, if you want to spend approximately $200 on a charging system, go for it. For all those reasons, I would call it a don't buy. Back to you, Padre. Oh, sorry. So close, but too expensive. That was Megan Maroney with the Fuel Ion Wireless Charger. Nice product, but uh, you got to make it more affordable before we can recommend it to our audience. Now, we want to thank you very much for joining us for this episode of Before You Buy. A special thanks to all the hosts who made it possible. Of course, to Leo Laporte, to Miriam Jawar, to OMG Chad Chan Johnson, and to Megan Maroney, who, which, by the way, you can find her every week, uh, every day, actually, for weekday, for Tech News Tonight, as well as i5 for the iPhone and iPad Today. Uh, don't forget that we do this show live every Friday around 2, 2.30. We're probably going to adjust the schedule for that. Pacific time. Just go to live.twit.tv and you can watch the pre-show, the post-show, and everything in between. We, we like to show you how the sausage is made. It's part of the experiment that is Twit TV. Speaking of that experiment, go ahead and jump into our chat room at irc.twit.tv. I've got a little screen down here where I can read what you're saying. So as we go along, especially for the live segments, it gives us the opportunity to answer the questions that you may have about the products that we are reviewing. Uh, don't forget that you can find our show page at twit.tv slash BYB. If you go there, you'll find all of our back episodes so that if there's a product you want to check out from the history of Before You Buy, you can always go there and get it. And you can also subscribe to the show so that every episode of Before You Buy gets downloaded automatically to your device of choice. Until next time, I'm Father Robert Balliser. This has been Before You Buy, and remember, you got to watch before you buy. <laughs>